and welcome to our recent sailing on the Viking Sea. This trip called the Mediterranean Odyssey took us from Barcelona, Spain to Venice, Italy and on into the heart of Tuscany. Parts one through four will be the trip itself and part five will be a ship tour of the Viking Sea and a dining guide. As mentioned, this trip will take us from Barcelona, Spain to Venice, Italy. In part one, we sail from Barcelona to Marseille, France. We were supposed to go to Monte Carlo, but because of high seas, we could not tender in, so Monte Carlo was out. Skipping around Monaco, we went directly to Laverno, Italy, the port for Florence and Pisa, Italy. As we get started with Barcelona, Spain, you might ask, what's up with the vaguely Asian sounding music? Well, it's because our hotel for the next two days was the Hotel Nobu. The hotel itself was based on a simple and elegant Japanese motif that carried over from the exterior to the interior of the lobby and on into the rooms themselves. The hotel in the rooms is spotlessly clean and well maintained and the rooms are comfortable and accommodating. And even though we were in Barcelona, Spain, we opted to eat at Nobu restaurant that night to enjoy the panoramic views of Barcelona from the 23rd floor with our friends, Tom and Sandy. The food as at all Nobu restaurants is a Japanese Peruvian fusion. And while good and elegantly presented, my dining companions and I found the food good, but not stellar as hoped for. We began with a little exploration of Barcelona on foot, starting with a small park just behind the hotel. For lack of the real name, we'll just call this the Dragon and Graffiti Park. So prominent was the welcome to tourist signs scattered around the park. Stepping out into the street, we continued our short tour of Barcelona. day on one of the provided tours we made our way to the Arc de Triomphe and the Boulevard of Saint Joan of Arc. This part of the boulevard houses the Arc de Triomphe along with some interesting architecturally styled streetlights that were all built for the 1888 World's Fair with the Arc actually serving as the main entrance point for the World's Fair. Continuing across the street, we walked into the Park de Ciutadella, or Park of the Citadel. One of the attractions of the park is the Gaudi Fountain. And while it may be called the Gaudi Fountain at this point, opinions vary on just how much Gaudi, a young student at university at the time, actually had to do with the design of the fountain. And as what would become a common theme with us, the fountain was non-operational at the time we visited. Next up on our tour was the Palau National or the National Palace. Now in this case, a palace is not really a palace for a royal family, but is instead a large public building and in this case a museum that is open to the public. In this case the museum houses the national collection of Catalonian art and functions as a performance space as well.
tour continued the next day with a drive-by at the narrow streets of the Fisherman's Quarter. Barcelona was established by the Romans in the first century BC and remains of the old Roman fortifications actually still exist around the old city of Barcelona. The city itself is a warren of hidden passages and courtyards sprinkled throughout the city. we saw in Barcelona was a bit of advertising on a church. Tacky, you might think? Well, for the privilege of hanging the sign temporarily while work was being performed on the cathedral, Samsung had to pay a major portion of the renovation cost. mentioned earlier, Antoni Gaudi was a sought-after architect in Spain from the late 1800s and into the 1920s. Perhaps his most iconic and known work was the Cathedral de la Sagrada Familia, or the Holy Family Cathedral. on 
the cathedral continues and it is about 70% complete. At one time, it was hoped that it would be completed by the 100th anniversary of Gaudi's death in 2023. However, more recent and realistic estimates suggest that the completion of the cathedral could happen between 2030 and 2040. Sailing away from Barcelona, the next morning found us in Marseille, France. In Marseille, we opted for a laid-back sort of panoramic tour of the city. Standing above the city is Our Lady of the Guard Church. Our sort of useless panoramic tour took us close but not close enough. There are also two, possibly three, old fortresses of interest in Marseille, none of which we saw either. So what we did instead was basically after getting off the tour bus, we just leisurely strolled around the harbor of Marseille and enjoyed the distinctly French vibe. I've commented on this in previous videos, but graffiti has overtaken Europe, and Marseille was no different with the graffiti monsters running rampant everywhere you looked. As in other cities in Europe that we have recently visited, churches and other religious monuments seem to be immune from the graffiti attacks with all other buildings and structures fair game. Back on the ship, and the next morning brought us to Livorno, Italy. Livorno is the port city for Florence, Pisa, and all of that side of the Tuscan region. Since we would be there for two days, we decided to visit Pisa on our first day and save Laverno for the next. We did not opt for Florence as we knew that we would be visiting Florence on the back end of our journey. Pisa is a lovely little city with a population of about 110,000 inhabitants. This ancient city sports more than 20 historic churches several medieval palaces, and several historic bridges across the River Arno. But of course, the main reason for many to make the journey to Pisa is to visit the Pisa Cathedral religious compound. It houses not only the cathedral and the baptistry next to it, but the focus will always be on the spectacular cathedral and its accompanying bell tower, the iconic Leaning Tower of Pisa. Construction of the tower began in 1173 and continued with some interruptions for the next 199 years. After its most recent refurbishment from 1990 to 2001, the tower was reopened to the public as safe to visit.
Returning to Laverno the next day, despite the threat of rain, we decided to visit the Forteza Vecchia. Built over the ruins of a fort constructed by the city of Pisa in the 1100s, this version of the fort was constructed and completed in the 1500s. It has served as a fortress and even a prison in the 1900s, while today it is a monument, but also a bar and discotechia. The fortress now houses a restaurant, a bar, and a performance stage. Now I have to admit, this is one of the coolest places we visited, in no small part because there was nobody else there. And as any good castle deserves a decent drawbridge, the Forteza Vecchia also had one. And since this was the way that we came into the fort, we would have to backtrack up through the fort and leave by the only other entrance and exit to the fort, which is located near the bar. As we bid goodbye to Laverno, we started our journey towards Rome. Well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this or found any of it interesting, please give us a like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell to be kept up to date with new releases, which are in the works right now.